Hey everybody and welcome to Avid Max Tying Tuesdays. My name is Brady and today we're going to show you how to tie the fish skull sculpin. Start off we're going to use a fire hole 839, I'm doing a size 2 today, and we're going to follow that up with one of these fish skull sculpin helmets, doing the large to match with the size 2 hook in olive color. From there we're going to use some Vivas thread, some 6 aught and olive as well, and then uh, quite a few materials on this fly. So we're going to start with a marabou tail, the MFC barred black olive marabou. We're going to be using some rabbit strips. These are the olive color as well. And then our underbody is going to consist of a few items. We're going to have some slopping feathers, barred as well, in olive black. I'm going to use some Senyo's laser dub in olive for the underbody. Then we're going to uh, create a collar again using the rabbit fur and the slopping. And we'll finish it all off with the fish skull living eyes that come with the helmet. All right, so we have our hooks and our vise there. This is the size 2 839, great fire hole hook. First thing I'm going to do is just flip it over real quick temporarily and throw my sculpin helmet on there. Not going to tie it on or fix it in there at all yet. I just want a reference point to kind of visually know where I'm going to start my thread uh, just as a guide as I, as I go to tie this guy. So we will start our thread right there on the hook shank now that we know where that point is at with some locking wraps and then we can work back to where we're going to tie in our first material. And we're just going to take our thread right on back to our first tie-in point here and that'll be right where that hook bend begins. And just being careful of that awesome sharp point on these fire hole hooks. So right about there and then we're going to tie in a little bit of marabou, so that barred marabou from Montana Fly Company. This is an awesome material from them. Lots of different color options available. And I'm just going to measure right about that hook shank a little bit past. Transfer that measurement and use that as my tie-in point. Right here on the back of the hook shank. And then we can work forward and wrap down this marabou. And we can figure out where our tie-in point was again and clip that off and just clean that all up on the hook shank and then prepare to tie in our next material so before we do that I'm actually gonna flip this guy over so I like to do this by turning my vise grabbing the hook turning the vise again and then you can throw it right down in there where you have it there we are. So that prepares us to measure out our rabbit strip. I'm going to measure this out, but I'm not going to tie it in just yet. I just like to figure out how long I need before I get too many materials going. So we're going to start our strip right where that tying point was again. That's where we're going to tie it off. And then we'll measure back to about where that marabou ends. And that's where we'll clip it, just like so. So you can see we got a nice long rabbit strip there to use in a moment, but I'm going to set that aside for now. And we're going to go ahead and tie in our next material here, which will be the schloppen feathers. And I have two schloppen feathers picked out. One is a little bit more full, has some longer barbels on it than the other one. I'm going to use the sparse one first as my underbody. The second one will come later. It's going to be my collar and I just want it to be a little bit longer, a little bit fuller. So I'm going to prep my feather by taking the point, pulling all the fibers back so that they're flaring out 90 degrees off of the stem there. And I leave myself with a nice little tie-in point here. And we can go ahead and fix that right on the side of the hook shank here. Just like so. Leave that material clip out of the way for now. From there, we're going to go ahead and create ourselves a nice little dubbing loop right on the back of this fly and this dubbing loop is going to be a few inches because we're going to cover up that whole uh, hook shank the main part of our hook shank here so about three inches in length is what i got for this size and play around with what you actually need as you do them then we'll work our thread forward and grab our gallop dubbing loop tool and go ahead and grab that dubbing loop and we can whip finish our bobbin thread off here and throw that over on the material holder for now. 
All right, so you can see I have my Senio laser dub all carded and stacked nicely there. Basically, all you have to do is pull the fibers out using the friction of the fibers against each other. We'll kind of straighten them out for you as you go. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim this beforehand. I'm going to cut off and square up my sides. These fibers are pretty long and I don't want them to be quite that long and I want them to all match. So nice bundle of dubbing there that we can fix into our dubbing loop. And I'm going to wax this actually before I go too much further. We'll wax our dubbing loop, help keep that material in place. And some of the loon high tacked wax here. And then we can start to place this dubbing. And I'm going to do it fairly sparsely. I'm going to pull all this material and separate it out throughout this entire dubbing loop. Just trying to make everything nice and even and keep those fibers straight out 90 degrees against the thread so that when we go to spin it, it spins as nicely as possible without too much getting trapped. Just like so. Okay, once we're happy with that, we don't want it to spin on us yet. Pull the schloppen feather that we have right next to it, right on top of it. And these as well, I want to be flared out 90 degrees. I'll just prep those out a little bit more here. And then what I like to do is I'll take that where my stem ends there and I will slide it in between the stubbing loop and just kind of block it in together. I'll turn a little bit more off to make that easier on myself. There we go. Just like so. So now we hold that in place, we spin our dubbing tool, preparing to spin the material, and then we can go ahead and release that and let that material spin out and continue to do so there. And as that spins, we'll brush it out and just try and keep all those fibers flaring. Just like so. Get a nice brush going here with that Senyo's laser dub and the Schloppen mixed together. This is our underbody. It's meant to, you know, add bulk, create profile. Doesn't have to be too pretty. Just get that prepped out here. Try and untrap as many of those fibers as we can. Don't want to pull out too much of the senyos. There we go. So once I have that pretty well prepped, I'm actually going to get it out of the way for now and throw it in this material clip. If you don't have a material clip and you want to do this step after, that might be a little bit easier on you. If you don't have anywhere to put your dubbing loop when you're done with it, if you, if you have to leave it hanging, it'll come unraveled when you do this next step. So you can do this step prior to the dubbing loop. I just like to do it first because this rabbit strip will be in the way as you're getting all of that prepared. So now that I'm done with that and it's out of the way, I can figure out where my rabbit strip is going to sit. And so I'm going to put it on the hook shank. And then I'm going to go back to the point where I want it to be connected to the hook. So right about there, if you can see that, is where I want my rabbit strip to be inevitably. So I'm going to remember that point and I'm going to bring it up and that's where I'm going to puncture through the bottom of the rabbit strip and go all the way through and then bring this guy right on down through the bend to that point in the, in the hook. All right. And if you get it wrong and, and you're not happy with where it is, which I think that's pretty good because I'm going to create a new a dubbing collar up front, you can always repuncture it and, and stick it back where you want it. But with that in place, I'm going to bring my thread back. Actually, I need to jump this out real quick and get it down below the vise. 
just like so. So now we're positioned so that we can tie that down. And then we just want to find where we want it. We're going to walk our thread back, moving all this other material out of the way to capture that piece of rabbit strip. And I'm going to reposition this again because my double loop and my rabbit strip are fighting each other. So let's switch this side. There we go. And then we can pull all this rabbit fur out of the way, sneak our thread up underneath it just to secure it down. And just try and get all those materials to lay. You want the rabbit strip to lay on top of that marabou there. There we are, just one quick wrap to secure it and then we'll really secure it down once we get up to the front here. So I'm going to half hitch off now, right at the front, throw my bobbin over on the bobbin cradle and then we can prepare to bring our dubbing loop on forward here. So let's get that back into position, bobbin out of the way. And we can start to wrap this. So we're going to just sneak right under that rabbit hide, pulling everything back as we go. We can capture off our dubbing loop. some locking wraps, trim that out, and then we're going to go ahead and flip this over and give it a good brushing, get everything pulled out of there. And as I do this, since we're going to lay that rabbit strip right on top, I try to kind of part the top so that it's going down to one side or the other of the hook shank here. Find the fibers that want to go either way. Just brush them out real good. Get that nice full underbody. So then once we're happy with that, we can take our rabbit strip that's been hanging out here kind of in the way and go ahead and figure out where we want that on the hook shank. So I gotta lift myself a little extra room so I'm gonna actually trim some of this out. I want to avoid too much bulk on the front end because we've got to slide that helmet on. Although it will slide over quite a bit of material. You do still got a bit to tie in here. So get that rabbit square on top there. And I always like to sift it from one side or the other of that hook point. And then we'll wrap it down. Work up on top of it there and just make sure it's nice and secure. And create somewhat of a little thread base there as we get going in preparation of our collar. All right, so we're gonna make another dubbing loop for our collar. And this one's going to be a little bit shorter, just two inches, two and a half inches or so. Because we're not going to wrap it near as many times, just a few times to make our collar. But same method as before, creating our dubbing loop here. And then we can get our thread up and out of the way. Utilize our dubbing tool. Just like so. And now we have a cool tool that we're going to use to help us with this next step because we're going to tie in some rabbit fur off of the zonker here. And I'm going to use these awesome clips from Stonefo to help me out with my rabbit fur here. You can see I have a zonker strip. I already placed it inside of one of those Stonefo clips. That way you can get it all to 
come out 90 degrees off of the hide, just like you need to do for this dubbing loop. And then you take the secondary clip and you slide that material right on in there and you grab it just like so to transfer it. So now what that does is makes it nice and easy to come in with your hair scissors. Helps if you have some nice Dr. Slick razor hair scissors to come in and trim that hide right off of there, super clean, just like that. Now you're ready to add that to your dubbing loom. Before I do so, we'll add a little bit of wax to this guy, some of this Loon high tack wax, swax rather. And we'll just put a little bit on there just to help keep that rabbit fur from moving around on us too much. So, next step, keep your dubbing loop open, slide in your rabbit, let your dubbing loop close on it, and then take your clip away. So now you have a nice long straight pieces of rabbit on that side, you got short buttons on this side, that is ready for spinning. I'm just going to take this, hold it, give it a spin, and then we'll let that go on up and get it going. So you can see how nicely that flares out as we spin it here. Now that we got that all nicely spun, you can come through it with a dubbing comb and just loosen up a lot of those fibers, get them all freed up before we go to wrap this just like so nice and full. And then we can take that up and I'm gonna put it back in my material clip again and get it out of the way there. From there, we're gonna tie in our slopping feather. And like I said, I have a little bit more of a full feather than I did. This is, it's just a little bit uh, thicker and the barbels are a little bit longer on it, all that good stuff. That's what I want for my collar. I went ahead and trimmed it out so that I can tie it in right on the front here. And I like to do this, oops. Don't want to knock our dubbing loop loose though. Let's fix that here before it gets away from me. Need that to stay in the material clip there. So with this slopping feather, I want to tie it in in front of the dubbing loop because I'm not going to loop it or I'm not going to spin it together, but I am going to wrap them together and I want the slopping to be on top as I wrap it forward. So we're just gonna capture this and secure it down and prepare to do so. So we're gonna tie it down right on top of that dubbing loop to where our collar is gonna be and then we can come back up and get our thread out of the way, clean this up a little bit in preparation for that fish skull sculpin helmet. And then we can start to wrap. So we'll bring our dubbing loop tear back out here, bring our slopping down, and we can start to wrap. So like I said, I'm gonna hold them together. I'm not gonna actually spin them together, but I am gonna wrap them together. And as we go around, I just want that slopping to stay on top. Continue to pull all the fibers back, just as you do with any other looped material, wrapped material here. And we'll wrap towards the hook eye three or four times, making sure to keep that slopping nice and tight along with the dummy loop. There you are. We can come down, capture that off. like so, make sure it's nice and secure here before we clip it out. And then we can pull all our fibers back a little bit and just make sure they lay back nicely the way that we want them to here. Cover up all our ugliness that might have gotten trapped. And then we'll be ready to put that last finishing touch on this bad boy. Again, we'll come in with our dubbing brush. 
free up all those fibers. Get them all worked backward. Just like so. And then create our head. So now as I'm doing this, I do like to take that sculpin helmet again and slide it on there and just kind of see how much room I have. Make sure that I'm not going to have anything exposed. But that looks pretty good right about there. So we'll sneak it off, just a few more thread wraps. And then we will half hitch this down. Actually, we'll finish it off. So now we're going to glue it. I'm going to take some of my Zappa Gap here. Just the CA Plus, but I have the brush on so that I can apply quite a bit of it. And we're just going to really glue this guy heavy on here. And quickly before it dries, slide it down into place. Just like so. You can hold it in position there and then I always like to come back in with my thread behind the hook eye here and just create a nice little dam. Although that glue I'm pretty confident in, this will prevent it from sliding off for sure. A little more glue just to protect those thread wraps. I'm gonna use my bodkin this time for more minute work. There we are, and now we're ready for our eyes. So it's nice they give you a matching eyes for the sculpting helmets. Thank you, Fish Skull. What I like to do is I'll take two eyes and just stick them to my fingers, just like so. Make sure that I got them handy there, it doesn't stick them to anything else. And I'm not too worried about the sticky because I'm going to glue them on anyhow. So just a little dab, a zap a gap in that cavity. And you can slide your eye right on in there, like so. So I can do this one so you guys can see it. Again, just a little dab. Not too much as you don't want it flying out of there. And then I just take it and slide it right into place there. And you can use your bodkin to help get it down into the cavity. Sometimes they don't quite fit right, but the glue helps them stay anyhow. Just like so. And you might come through and Brush the whole thing out a little bit more. I like to flip it back over in the vise at this point. Keep that vise from trapping anything extra in there. Just like so. And you can brush it again real nice. There is a nice completed fish skull sculpin. Few materials, but it's definitely worth it. It's a super awesome fly, very effective for many different fish species, wherever you got a healthy sculpin population. If you enjoyed the video today, make sure to give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see us tie in the future, please drop us a comment in the lines below. For more fly fishing and outdoor related videos, be sure to subscribe to the Avid Max YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you out there.